Mark. Um, maybe you could start by just taking us through the, um, the thought process that, that's led to the decision to, uh, to leave Wellington Phoenix after this season. Um, look, it's, it's been uh, not an easy thought process. It's been one that's um, gone on for a bit of time. Um, I guess that the, the turning point was when the family went back after the, the Christmas holidays and I had a feeling then that it wasn't going to happen in terms of them staying with me, uh, whether it be for the rest of this season or, or, or the season after. And I guess that's when the, the conversations kind of started uh, with, you know, first of all, Gilly. Uh, and then, like I said, uh, it was interesting because this morning, I was telling Courtney this morning, I went to get a coffee at my local Babylon cafe. All right? um, and the, the, the lady actually who served me um, said, look, I'm sorry to see you go and everything else. But I saw when I spoke to your wife um, back then that she sort of saw it coming as well. So go and do an interview then, because people kind of don't really understand, or maybe they don't believe what's going on here. But simply, that's that was the case, and it, it got more and more hard. I guess I was um, I was kind of in a different headspace because of how attached I am and how how attached I've become to to Wellington and the football club, um, and I was sort of divided. And I thought in the back of my mind, um, I'll, I'll find a way and a means to get them over here. It'll happen. But I think I was just lying to myself for the whole time because, uh, you know, I was trying to buy time as well at the same time. And I was telling Rob as well, I said, look, just give me another opportunity. This is where it's sort of heading towards. And it's, it wasn't my intention to let anybody on, you know. It's, that's not wasn't the case at all. I was just very confused as to what to do and what the best thing to do was, you know. Um, but it got to a situation where, you know, it puts a strain in your relationship. It really does, you know, and uh, you're tied, I'm tied here, but, you know, my family's over there and we had <laughs> some tough, heated discussions about it all. And ultimately, like I said, uh, we work hard at this football club, you know, and I sort of go home and I'm on my own a lot. I don't go out, you know, some of you guys might be in bars or whatever, but I dare say you'll probably never see me out because I'm home and you're home alone. And you can WhatsApp, FaceTime, Skype as much as you want. But, you know, there, there are enough moments and some of you guys would understand this, some of you guys won't, you know, and I understand that. I understand all of it, but, you know, there are moments where a dad's got to be a dad. A dad's got to be there, put his arm around his, his kids, you know, be there for, for the family. And I've missed that, and I don't want to miss that again. Um, <clears throat> I made a huge sacrifice, so when I came here, I spoke to my players about what sacrifice means, um, what sh getting out of your comfort zone means. I didn't ask any of my players to do anything that I hadn't done personally, um, and, and, and they took all that on board. So here we are now, and uh, I know people can talk about, you know, when's the right time to, to, to make a decision. I can honestly say that I'm not sure if there's a right time. I try to answer all your questions as honest as possible throughout the season as to when the noise started, right? And I can genuinely say when the noise really started, there was no noise for me. It was just speculation in the media. That, that, was, that was it. And, and then when it got a little bit kind of, not serious, but when it started, you know, then, then it was something that I didn't want to deflect from my playing group and what we were trying to achieve here at this, at this football club. Um, but it got to a stage where, I, you know, when it was right, it was right. When I say it was right, I, I couldn't let anybody else on. So this is purely me, you know. The club were waiting on, on me for a long time. And that was kind of selfish from myself as well. And I, and I was torn. I didn't know what to do, I'll be honest with you. I've never been in this situation before. I was always going to let someone down, no matter what decision I made. And, and I've let my club down and my fans down and, and everybody here. And that's, that's genuinely how I feel about it. And to... Uh, you know, I'm extremely apologetic. They've got every reason to be upset with my decision. I get that. Um, all I can say is that I'm, I'm sorry, for, you know, for those that I've upset. I just hope that they can kind of understand my side. When, when and how did you tell the players? The first time it started was in Auckland, um, where, you know, the, there was a lot more noise being said. And I just, I spoke to Gilly again and I said, look, I'm getting the feeling here that you know, 
my concern are for my players to protect them from day one till 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 the end. And if they're not feeling this a certain way, if they're thinking a certain way, because I've been in their shoes before, you know, I just wanted to alleviate any any questions that they may have. And I know how it works. They they sort of go into little cliques and little groups and things like that. And we discussed it and we thought, okay, let's just say something now. And back then it was though there was no real clarity on the matter. I just wanted to let them know that you know, the noise that you're hearing, you know, there is a little bit of substance there. Um, I'm planning on being here, but there's the, op there's the option that I may not be here as well, right? Um, and, and, but, and I said to them as a, at the same time, if they've got any issues or questions to come up to me personally and let's speak about this, understanding that it was a tough time of the year where players are looking to renegotiate or talk and things like that. And that's all I could be, is, is open and honest with them. Um, I didn't tell them, it wasn't the time to tell them specifically I'm not going to be here, that only happened last week. You know, I only told Rob a couple of weeks ago that it's a, this is definite. Right? But like I said, I've always been pretty open, honest, not just with them, but with you guys as well. You know, there are, there are personal things that, you know, that don't, don't come out. That's between myself and the football club. I think you guys will all understand that those privacy issues, you know, but, um, but along the way there's always been communication. Speak about noise. I'm sure that you've been aware of the noise around about um, yes, yep. you miss your family, but yeah. he's going to another club. Yep. Can you can you give us any clarity around what your next move is? Look, I'm a professional coach, um, and I've said this to you, Piney, and, and to pe other people as well that you know whatever I decide to do next, um, my family will be, will be with me, and they'll be in the same house as me. <laughs> um, apart from that, I haven't signed a contract with anybody. Simple as that. And as far as, um, I don't mean to dominate this guys, I'll ask one more. Um, the recruitment of players at Wellington, will you step away from that now or are you still involved? Yeah, in another, yeah another com complicated, confusing kind of situ situation where, you know, that was part of my job. Uh, and I said to Gilead as well, you know, I'm walking away from this, right? You know, if you don't want me to be there, but at the same time, I want what's best for this football club as well, right? So. You know, when Alex Roof or Louis Fenton asked for advice and, and things like that, it, all I could tell them was, you Kiwi, Kiwi boys, you know, he's a fantastic footballer. You know, I don't know what's happening next year. Um, but if I were you, you, we're building something here. Don't go anywhere, you know. How do the players take it when you tell them last week that you Hard to gauge, Phil, it's hard to gauge. Um, you don't really know. I mean, you're probably best off asking them that question. Uh, but it was important I let them know. Um, it was done after the game as well. Not a good time, you know, after a loss as, as well. But I just wanted to reassure them that what's most important is how proud I, I am of the players for all the challenges that were set at the start of the year. Um, They've come through uh, unbelievably well. So it was more about how proud I am of them. You know, um, they've, they've done remarkably well. You know, throughout some real tough periods of this football club, that I'll always be there for them, no matter what. But more importantly, we've got a job to do. You know, we've got a couple of games to go, then finals football, and then anything can happen. And so let's just move on for this very quickly. Um, that they'll all forever remain. You know, part of me. You know, um, they're an extension of me as well. You know, I love all those guys. So, like I said, the main focus after I told them was that we let's get the job done now. You know, it's important that we move on from this, and you know, this is how your coach feels about you. Um, and, and we we carry this forward now. There's, there's, we've come come so far. We've done so much hard work, not to let it slip away. Are you worried that this may jeopardise the season? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I can't answer that question. It's all I can do is answer the question that you just asked asked me. You know, I, I guess other clubs have had announcements about coaches not being there. They've gone on to do okay. So, I kind of use that as an, as an example as well. You know, it's a uh, you know, you've got you got Brisbane who beat us, who whose coach won't be there next year. Adelaide as well. I mean, two coaches that, that, that who won't be there next year, you know, we played against. So I look, 
that is an example as to it doesn't really, it shouldn't really matter. They're professionals, you know, and so am I. I mean, I've got a job to do here, you know. I was, I was brought in to do a job and it's not done yet. And um, in regards to you said your family will go with you wherever you go, I guess one question fans have asked is, well, why would they move to Melbourne, um, you know, but not Wellington? Can you just kind of clarify yeah. a little bit around why it's easier to do that? I could. They're all personal kind of kind of situations, but there's also been questions as to I knew what I was getting myself in for, right? When I came here, and the family knew that. That's that's. You know, again, I'm, I'm pretty apologetic in regards to that, but at the same time, I'm hoping they're, they're understanding that my intention was a, a very good one when I came here. It was of the best one for this football club. I came here and I gave my all, every, and I'll continue to give absolutely everything of myself until that final whistle blows everything and along the way the plan was always dad go and do this you know wife go and do it go and do this you've got this it was a big job one that uh, could have easily been or gone the other way I took a massive risk coming here you know and like I said I made a huge sacrifice coming here it could have gone pear-shaped very quickly I could have been at the door very quickly as well as an A-League coach as the season grew on, it was always a matter of bringing the family in over holiday periods and, and hoping that they, we can work out with the school, my kids play football, the curriculum's different here education-wise, you know, the football's a little bit different here as well. As, you know, um, and then my wife too, you know, I've got a son that's a type 1 diabetic, you know, he's, 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 you know, he's insulin dependent, you know, he's had that for 10 years, it's not easy, you need a support network around you as well. I don't talk about these kind of things, they're all personal issues, but they're things that a family talks about, you know, and, and you know, I'm not there for that, you know. My wife hasn't slept eight hours a night for ten years. She's continually, you know, checking his BGLs and numbers and testing him and, and things like that. That puts a strain on on your family, you know. There's a lot of things that go on behind closed doors that people don't see. My intentions were, were good. It was to try and convince them to come over and stay. I, I, I love this place. If it was about me, I'd, I'm here. And you got me long, long term. You know, I mean, the people that embrace me, the club has fantastic people here. You know, not just Wellington, but New Zealand. Um, I'm, I, you know, it, it, it hurt me a lot because <laughs> I'm here day in, day out. And, uh, you know, um, the questions, why is it different? Because of all those reasons. The, the schooling's different. You know, we have a lot of friends in, in, in different cities, let's say. Um, Let's say if it is Melbourne, in Sydney as well, you know, it's completely different. The schooling curriculum is the same, you know, for football, for the kids as well. All those kind of things are, are different than what they are here in New Zealand. Do you, uh, sorry, for one more. Um, so you said you have a time with another club, but do you expect to be a coach of an A-League club next season? Uh, I'm a professional coach, yeah. I, 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 love, well, I love what I do. I love what I do here. <clears throat> Will it be the same? I don't know, you know. I may shock you all and, and may not do anything for a year as well. I don't know. You know, like I said, the, my, my agent deals with a lot of that sort of stuff. Right now, I think the best decision is to be up front and just to say, look, I tried hard, really hard to make things work. They didn't work and with the family, is what I'm saying. Um, but this club will forever be part of me and in my heart. They've, the club has never let me down. They've given me everything I needed to do. You know, and, and then talk about the future. I mean, you can have a look at what we've built at this club. I mean, you've got so much more to be thankful of as well. You know, the young kids that have been given a chance. I, I really hope that the coach that comes around, you know, works with the, the young players as well because we've got some fantastic young talent. The investment that's been made by the football club as well. Um, you know, the, you, know the, you can talk about, and maybe the questions are about Rob and myself. We've got a you know, pretty good relationship. You know, we, we, he's, he's put a lot of time and effort and money into this football club. If he was to walk away, what happens? You know, you've got to sort of think about that. When, when there are a lot of people, there are clubs like North Queensland and Gold Coast who came in and jumped back out straight away. You know, these clubs have been around, they've been pretty solid, so I think you've got to pay some respect to, to the people that have kept Wellington alive um, and football alive in this country as well. That's very, very important. Mark, you said after Christmas it became uh, slightly more challenging. Was there ever a, a serious consideration that you wouldn't even be able to, to see out the first year? Uh, it's a good question, Joey. Um, I don't really want to answer that because it'd be unfair, whatever I say. Um, but
but it was tough. It was, it was, it was tough, and I kept it a lot to myself that, that I, I knew the, what the answer would be, all right? Uh, as soon as I left around the you know, end of January when the holidays finished for the kids. Um, I think I was just lying to myself and trying to convince myself, thinking that I can convince them. And, and I, I was telling, I told Rob as well, give me one, I'll have a one more crack, you know, I've got this, I've got this. I think I was lying to myself, but it was tough. Yeah, there were, there were moments there. Like I said, it puts a strain on your, on your family. It does. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that go on behind closed doors, and I guess that's what a, bit, a lot of people don't see is, is what goes on behind closed doors when, when families are together. Um, but my job as a leader of this football club is to come in to work every morning and, and put on a, a good face and be that strong leader that, that you know, and my players and my staff need. And, you know, I don't talk to them too much about it, but like I said, the, the, the nights got longer, you know, when you come home from work and, you know, they're, they're tough, they're not easy, you know, and you've got to try to get, go to bed, you know, with all those issues in your head, but then come with some clarity and a clear mind, you know, to work and, and then you, you go about your way and, um, you know, like I said, I'm, I think people know I'm pretty driven and, and ambitious. I know how to separate my, my personal life from my professional life as well. <clears throat> but there are times, you know, where I could be better upon reflection, you know. Every day I sort of reflect and see how, how could I have done things better. I think that's been something that we've done every day as a football club as well. You know, how can we be better? How can, how can we do things better? You know, um, that's important. I'm sure when you arrived you almost had the, the two-year pathway almost plotted out or, or what yeah. you would have liked to see. And longer, by the way. And longer. Yeah. Um, so I suppose what, what position now is, is the club with still limited number of players of this current crop we signed for next year for that same pathway to be followed by somebody else coming in as coach? Look, I think there are, there are you know, some things that have been introduced that, uh, that I'm hoping the club will carry on. And I know Dave spoke about um, you know, the, the cultural effect as well, um, the environment that's been set up, the mentality of, of the football club. Um, you've got some really good leaders, some really good people that have signed on already. You know, we expect them to carry on all those all those messages from this season um, as well. Um, I guess it's for others to talk about, you know, what's improved and if it's improved, or the players for that matter. Um, I just do know that it's important that the support staff are here. They understand it. They know what, what, what to do. You've got a core group of players who have re-signed already who, who are very clear on, you know, what's taken place this season. Um, that, that our values and, and, and the culture of the football club is, is being instilled and will continue to be talked about um, for the next one to come on. Uh, and that's what happens. I mean, I know, you know at Sydney FC, we, st we started a culture there right from the, from the get-go. Um, doesn't matter what that was, um, but we had core values attached to that football club. It was important that when the older members or if someone else moved on, it was quite seamless that there was always, you know, two or three or maybe even four players who carried on that culture and, that, and the values of the football club. I think that's extremely important, that we don't forget all the hard work that was put in at the start of the year. I mean, there have been values here at the club, you know, the, the recreation of, of the badge. And it was just a matter of, you know, coming out again and, and just, um, you know, I, I suppose, putting a lot, placing a lot of importance on what that meant. Um, and getting that cultural connection again. Um, and I think you've got, like I said, you've got people, players there that have signed already for next year who are going to continue that on. And just one last one for me. This decision maybe seems like a, a result of your personal and family situation as of, as of today and as of now. Would you rule out coming back to the club in, in, in the future when those situations weren't necessarily present? Or, I mean, do you still feel that channel yeah. would be open? No, I'm not sure if you were in the cafe when I got that coffee at Babylon. And um, the last thing I said to her was exactly that. I said, uh, I'll be back in a heartbeat. If this club wants me back, I'll be back in a heartbeat because there's unfinished business here. I love it. Like I said, if, if my kids were younger, if they were older, e either or, either side of, you know, when I can kick them out of home, right? <laughs> and they're independent. Or if they were too young not to know any better kind of thing, it'd be okay. But they're teenagers. It's really tough, you know? I mean. Uh, I get quite emotional talking and thinking about this, you know. I mean, I spent some time as well uh, back home, and I know one of your questions were, would you allow the next coach to do that? Um, 
Yeah, I, I think David answered that question, but I'll be back in a heartbeat. I love this place. Uh, you know, the, like I said, the people of Wellington have really taken me in. This club has taken me in. I can understand. I can understand the hurt, um, but and I'm really, like I said, I'm, all I can do is apologise for that. And I can understand why they why they're angry, and I've. And, I, and they're right. Everything they want to say about me, they're right. I can't deny if they think I'm this, that, or, or whatever. I can just walk and do is apologise and say I'm sorry about that. You know, um, I worked hard. I gave it my all. Absolutely everything. I've dedicated my my life, a year's life, to this. You know, and uh, there's a, a lot more to go. I'd love to come back. But like I said, that's who knows where life takes you. I mean, I thought I was going to be here, not just two years, but a lot longer. You know, it just it's got nothing to do with the club as well. Just so you know. They've been fantastic. This is this is purely me and my own personal situation. Yeah, Mark, you just pretty much touched on it there, but you spoke about how much importance family is to you, obviously, in this decision. There's nothing else that has played a role. I suppose yeah. I'm getting at this. Could the Phoenix yeah. have done anything more? To... No, they couldn't have. Look, you know, people, there, were, there were talks about um, the, the club should have done more to bring a family over. It's, it's got nothing to do with it. You, know, you can't fight for someone to, to, to bring someone's family over. You know, I made it pretty clear that it was important that my family was going to be with me, wherever I chose to, that I found it too hard. And maybe it got blurred in between some of my comments and, and sometimes how the media decide to, to pick up on a story. It was never something that I forced upon them. The club tried really hard to find a solution to that uh, as well. Look, I'm not, I'm not like any other coach where, you know, I, I strive for, for perfection. Um, I want improvement as well, and, and I had those, those discussions with, with Rob as well. You know, how can we improve um, the football club and the environment um, and, and things like that? I, I don't think I'm not apologetic about that. You know, I think it'd be remiss of me if I didn't bring up those questions where, because I want to improve. You know, we've got a taste of, you know, what this looks like. You know, but how can we get better? You know, but they're all personal, internal, you know, questions that I had um, with Rob, but. This has nothing to do with the club. This, this is about. This is unfortunately, selfishly, however you want to look at it. You know, this is this is my decision. You know, and uh, you know, maybe you might look at this and, and have a crack at my family. And so be it. I'll, I'll take any punches that come my way. You know, I've uh, I'm pretty big enough and ugly enough to, to take on all those sort of things. All I can do is, like I said, said is, is say that when I came here, my intentions were very, very good. I want to make a difference at this football club. I gave it my all. Um, I wish, I really wish it could have been different. I really wish, I, I, more than you know. But it's not to be the case. And also, who do you feel should continue the, the work you've, you've started here at the fans? Oh, it's not for my. It's not for me to to, to go and and talk about who that person should be. Like I said to to David and to Rob, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. And I know a lot of the coaches and a lot of the people. I know everybody in the game. Um, all I can do is 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 help th in in that in that discussion. Um, ultimately, the club will make that that choice. But you've got a fantastic support staff there. You know they're the best. You've got players who have already re-signed, who understand the club, who who, who get it. You know who are going to take this forward as well. Uh, so you've got you know a core group of people from the staff side and the playing group side, where I'm very comfortable and the club should be as well about going forward. So no concerns about what may happen? Whether well, there, there are concerns, yeah, because I take it personally and <laughs> I don't want this club to be in the wrong hands. I mean, again, it, it's, this is, it's hard for me to say this because when I go, I go. But at the same time, it's not like I'm not going to be looking over my shoulder, you know, checking Wellington Phoenix and, and seeing what decisions they're making because it's become so personal for me. But at the same time, there's also a line that I can't cross, and I know that, you know, it's... But the clubs will, will always be a part of me, and I'll, I'll always be... It'll be important to me. It will be. It's, it's a club that I want to do well more than most. Whether that's, you know, whether I'm coaching against this team next year or not, you know, I'll be still looking over my shoulder. I've made friends here for life. You know, I've met some fantastic people. You know, you Kiwis are not as bad as what everyone said before I came here. You know, you guys are... Uh, no, I will say that, you know, very honourable, you know, good people, really good. You know, I think a lot of Australians can take a leaf out of your book in terms of how, as, as human beings, I'm not saying you're perfect, right, but I'm saying that, you know, I've met some really strong, strong, great human beings here, you know, and I think that's a credit to, to, to the New Zealanders, you know, but 
I, I do. I will take it personally. You know, I just hope it's not in the wrong hands. I just hope the coach, you know, believes in all the things that we've, you know, we've sort of instilled or or help bring back out the values and the culture of this football club. They believe in youth, really, really important. They believe in Kiwis, really important as well. You know, they have to understand, you know, it, this is a different club, it's unique to any Australian club. It really is unique. Um, and I think we've kind of found, a, you know, the, a formula there that, that should be there for a long time. Um, it could be tweaked and improved. I hope it is improved because that's the key there. Um, but. Yeah, I'm confident the club will will, will make the right decision. Yeah. Since, since becoming Bennett's coach, Mark, uh, how have your views of Aotearoa changed uh, non football and perhaps not non footballing wise? How have my sorry changed? Your attitude, are you, your views of New Zealand changed? Oh, substantially. I've I've only ever been here a couple of times before. I think I've said it in the past. You know, I, I, culturally, it really took me aback. You know the. To, to see how strong the Maori culture is here, um, and and the values that this country places, um, with its historic ties, I, th I think that's that's uh, enormous respect there. First and foremost, <clears throat> you know, the people, you know, the city, um, the country, it just everything is, has blown me away. Like I said, this has been real tough. You know, had had it not been the case, then then it would have been a much easier decision. You know, it would have been just family and that's it, and I wouldn't have had to struggle over it and not lie to myself so so much. But you know, I take with me so many beautiful moments, so many great experiences. You know, things that'll be with me for for a long time. This this feels like home. You know, there was a time through the season where I was calling it home, where I was saying this is about us and we, and you know, and and, and the Kiwis would just sort of pick me up on that and say, "Oh, you're a Kiwi, bro," you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So you know, it's um. It's affected me, and, and I said it, when you get me, you get me 100%, and, and this place has got me 100%. Or you can go the complete opposite and really piss me off, you know, and, and then I'll go the complete other way, right? But it's got me, you know, and, and it gets you. And people warn me, a couple of people warn me, he goes, the, you know, Wellington might get to you, just be wary of that, and it has. So, like I said, I'll, I'll be back um, at some stage, either as a coach or, or as just a fan, um, or as just someone who, who loves coming here and, and, and being part of it. You know, I feel like you know, I kind of laid my hat here, you know, and, and it'll, it'll be kept here. As this um, chapter winds down in your life, how are the emotions? Yeah, strong, huh? strong, um, yeah, yeah, anyway, strong. There are obviously still like a lot of critics up in Australia about Martin's place in the A-League. Yep. Um, having spent a year here coaching, yep. what's your message for, for those people who've been... Lay off. Lay off the Phoenix. Lay off. It's simple as that. This, this club has a huge future and a long future in the game. Great people um, who, who have invested and are in it for the long haul. Um, who understand the game, who want to be Want to be there for a long time? Um, who've got, you know, who've got a, a place in the game as well? It would have been so easy for a number of years through all, all the ups and downs. We just walked away, packed up shop, and just said, "See you later." Um, and through adversity, and the club's been through a lot of adversity and been kicked from pillar to post. I think uh, they, they've come out the other side always gracefully. You know, you, you, it's not like, and they could have many times, and maybe if I was a leader of the football club, I would have told people where to go a long time ago, you know, when, when, but they've done it with grace and, and a lot of class. Um, so my message to, to the FFA or, or people who are running the, the independent league or anybody else for that matter is, you know, I've lived it, I've breathed it, I've seen, I've seen the club from the inside out now. And, uh, and, then, and to be honest, they're not going anywhere. This club's not going anywhere. I, I firmly believe that this club will be here for for the long term, and they and they add a lot to the to to the league as well. So the uncertainty around the club's future didn't play any part. In the, in the oh well, they, of course there were questions there, and there were questions that I had with Rob. I'm not going to deny that, you know, and I, I, I question that. I think a lot of people question that. I mean, it wasn't easy, if, you know, when I was when I first came here to 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 entice players to come. They asked the same question, you know, um, and I kept having those conversations with with Rob ever since the, the working committee started and, and Rob's a big part of that committee as well. You know, of, of course, but the way I see it is that the club will be here for a long time. They, they took a lot of the boxes.
You know, I, I guess the you know you can look at it two ways. The question could be, you know, why 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 shouldn't Wellington Phoenix be here? You know, I mean, people can talk about um, the crowds or maybe the ratings and stuff. It's, it's it's unique over here. I mean, we're one of two clubs whose uh, attendances in the stadium and 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 viewed by people on TV has risen. From what I understand, I could be wrong there. Us in Perth, that's it, All right? So Maybe we've commentary that Mark. I think you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, no, I mean, that that should be, you know, in terms of all these metrics that have been placed on us. You know, it's it's not one that the club has ever placed a burden on me or, or put pressure on me to try and improve. We knew that if we get, if we set the platform, and we get that right in pre-season, was a lot of work to, to get that, that a lot of things will cl slowly start to fall into place. And, and I think you can see the way we've evolved, not just as a playing group, but as a football club as well. Um, and on the back of that, you know, we've ticked off a lot of those so-called metrics. I mean, it's always tough, you know, people don't understand that this isn't Sydney, this isn't Melbourne, or Perth for that matter. You know, we've got a certain amount of people that live in, in this city. Um, and it's always gonna be tough to try and entice them. I'm not going to sit here and, and compare us to other, other teams. I'm going to let other people do that. But I believe we're in a much better place <clears throat> as a football club and as a team than others. I will say that. And, and it's important that we just continue this on now and we continue to do um, you know, the hard work um, and, and all the work that's been um, put in place already. And will you be making a decision <clears throat> on your next move before the end of the season? No. No. I've, Told my agent as well that uh, you know, let's get this nuisance out of the way, and it is a, it's a nuisance, and I'm and I'm in the middle of this as well, so I get that. And like I said, uh, it is all my fault, you know, and 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 I am very apologetic about you know being a nuisance to to, to all this, right? Um, but my players come first, you know, um, and they always have, um, and I'm going to be very clear on once I've made this decision that just leave me alone and there's a lot of football to be played and and the main focus is on finishing off the season the best way we know possible whatever that may be i don't know um, i won't put a ceiling on it and i told the players that as well but let's create that moment let's let's have that season for for people to to to, to live in in their memories for a long time that's that's what we want to do we want to put you know smiles on people's faces we want people to be proud of our football club you know we want all of New Zealand to be proud of us. That's what we're going to do, you know. And and maybe we've gone, you know, and there's a few little shakes in the last couple of games. You know, I can't put my finger on that. It could be tactical, could be technical, it could be mental, you know. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, nothing will stop any of us, myself included, and I'll lead the charge there. And from the first day, it was it was work, work, work. I'll give everything my, myself and I'll continue to do that until the season's end. That That's, that's what I can promise. Until the end of the season, you know, no, no decision will be made over there or whatever, whatever happens with my career afterwards happens. Right now, the, fully, for the full focus is on this football club and making sure that we, we finish off on the best way possible. And what do you expect the reception to be this, this summer? Look, like I said, I, 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 ex I expect and I understand the disappointment in, you know, with the people. I, I get that. They're hurt. Um, and all I can say is that I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. Um, I'm extremely apologetic about that. And if if they feel that or sense that, I'll, I'll take that. You know, um, it's my fault. I'm, you know, no one else's. And if they want to throw oranges, bananas, all the rest of it, look, I'm not the best eating fruit. You know, so <laughs> I've been told by my, my nutritionist so I should eat a bit more of that. But I'll, I'll take whatever hits come my way. Yeah, like I said, I'm, you know, they've been forthcoming anyway. Um, it, it happened when we lost three in a row, you know, it, was, it wasn't easy back then. Um, and I've, it happens throughout my career as well. Um, but like I said, um, I, I, hope, I hope more so that they, the last regular home um, game, that they, they can kind of come out and support the players. It's really important. You know, and I'm saying this on behalf of my players in the football club, that their support this season has been fantastic. Um, and we really need them to come out. Um, do what you, you need to do with me. That's 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 okay. Um, but please be behind the players. This, none of this is any of their fault, you know. And, and like I said, uh, we'd love their support. 
I mean, they've been fantastic to me. I haven't got a bad word to say. They, they've got every right to say what they want. They pay their hard-earned. They're supporters and members of this football club. I'll take them on the chin. I'm, I'm very sorry f for everything, um, but I hope they come and support this team because this season's been great. You know, we've played some fantastic football. Um, a lot of neutrals are supportive of the way we're playing as well. We've, we've got a lot of fans on the other side of, of the Tasman as well. Um, with, with the third highest goal scoring team in the league, you know, it tells you a bit about how, how much we've, we've evolved. So you can have a crack at me, no dramas, but please just be supportive of the players. You know, they deserve it um, and we need it. It's a big game against Melbourne City. It's huge. And do you have any regrets, sorry, um, about just the way the process has played out? You know, yeah, look, it, there's, there's no, there's no, like I said, there's, <coughs> I do because I don't really know what the, the best way the best way would have been. I, I really don't know. I, I, I can't tell you. All I can do is I, could, I was really honest with the people that mattered. You know, um, I told my football club when it started. I told my players when it started. I, I tried to tell, be open with you guys. And, and when there was nothing to be said, there was nothing to be said. Um, then at the same time, I had to protect my players, and my football club. Could it have been better, probably. How I don't know. You know, Did, should I have come out earlier and said, look, this is what's happening. You know, I, I told the right people. Um, I'm not sure what the right way is. I'm not sure because had I said it earlier, how would that have affected my playing group, you know, and the supporters and everybody else in terms of where I thought things were going when my family left after the Christmas holidays, you know? Um, is there a right and wrong? I don't, know what the, I don't know what the answer is there. I really don't know. I, 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 was, I tried to do the best that I could in, in the, whole, the whole situation. I was conflicted. And very, it was very, compl uh, very complicated throughout the time. Um, I really can't answer that because had I said something earlier, um, what would the playing group have done after that? You know, had we have gone on and won three in a row and scored 15 goals in three games? I don't know. So I guess that's the big question now: is like how the playing group is going to react to this, knowing that you've lost two in a row, you can't be Melbourne City fans will think that this decision is probably jeopardising the season. And it's why I offered to resign after, after the Brisbane game, you know? So I've, I told the playing group and I told Gilly as well, you know, I said, I'm not going to stand in the way of this playing group or this football club, no chance. Too much good work and hard work's been done. And I said, if it's better without me, so be it. You know, I'll, um, it won't change anything. I love this football club, I love my players. I believe in them, you know, and, and I believe that we, we can do something fantastic and something great. But I did say, I did tell, tell the club, it's, I'm not standing in their way. If, if it became a problem or an issue for me to continue to be here because of all this, I'm out, I'm out of the door. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. That's not dead. Uh, what weakness most about uh, Wellington and Phoenix? Sorry? Uh, what what weakness most about Wellington and Phoenix? Huh, a lot. Um, my players, my staff, for, I mean, I spent so much time with them. Um, they're, they're like a, an extension as well, they're like a family, they've been a family to me without my immediate family. I'm just going for coffees, I'm just going meeting people when, and you know, when they didn't really want to say hello at the start because maybe we weren't that good and then we'll be a bit, we'll be, we're a little bit better. Um, I miss the shyness, I miss, I miss the, the laid back way of, way of life, I, you know, the, the the hipsters out there as well, they're all kind of cool, you know. Um, it's just a really, I don't know, for, for, for me grow, being, you know, growing up in the big smoke and in a, in, a, in a place like Sydney where it's all hustle and bustle and people forget about what life should be about and that's connecting with people and spending time with people and not just about work and, and trying to pay off a debt, you know. This has really given me a, a, a different lease in life, a different perception, you know, and a different outlook on life. Just you know, to take the little things in and, and to really appreciate those things, to connect with people a lot more. Um, just a peaceful, serene place. You know, I, I open my window, and please don't think that I'm pretentious, but you know, I look at the bay, you know, and I look how how beautiful that is, and you go for walks, and just just the peacefulness of it. How the, the the people as well, how great they've been towards me. They've they've been great towards me. You know. Maybe not now after this, but you know, it's uh, just there's just, there's a lot to thank and there's a lot for me to be grateful for. You know, I'll, I'll forever be grateful and thankful for the opportunity that was given to me um, by the football club. I, I could never thank them enough, and it'll always be in my heart. But there's, like I said, I've I've made friends for life, and it'll be those friends that I'll miss as well. But 
like I said, I'll be back in some capacity or another, either you know, kayaking or, or walking through the bushland or taking a swim, which I haven't done by the way because it's too cold. I, I don't care what you say, every time I drive past and see hundreds of people swimming in, in summer, it is freezing in there and I cannot force myself to go and, and take a swim in that bay. Maybe however, if I come back right as a tourist or something like that, um, look I'd love to one day come back as a coach like I said, that, that'd, be, that'd be superb and then we can really finish off um, things that I'd love to finish off but like I said, I, I think there's, there's, there's things in place now, it's probably for other people to talk about rather than me that, um, <clears throat> yeah, that we, can, we can move forward. So thank you guys as well. I'm sure I'll see some of you guys uh, afterwards, but yeah, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank you guys as well and everybody else here and it is what it is. I'm sorry about it, but life goes on and this club, believe me, we, we can continue to fight and we continue to go three games to go at least. And who knows where it goes then, okay? All right.